Yeah, hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit, and today we're going to be looking at this tank. This is not the T-62A, this is the Object 140. It's a Tier 10 Soviet medium tank. Now this tank is due to get some pretty nifty changes to it come 9.1. But before I even get to those changes, I want to look at this tank specifically because a lot of people struggle in this tank. And a lot of people don't like it. And one of the reasons why it's getting a little bit of TLC in update 9.1 is because the player base, to be perfectly honest with you, are more inclined to go for the T62A rather than the Object 140 because they generally think that the T-62A is a much better tank. Now, don't get me wrong, the T-62A is a lovely tank. It's a fantastic tank. And it's got, you know, a really good armor profile. It's got a really accurate gun. And it's got a lot going for it. Whereas the Object 140 is more of what I term a finesse tank. It's slightly harder to drive than the T-62A, but slightly more rewarding. Because if you can master this tank, if you can get on with this tank as it is currently right now, then to be honest with you, you're not gonna struggle in a lot of mediums. Not really. And that's why I really like this tank. So let's have a look at the two tanks side by side in Blitz Stars, in Tank Compare. And let's see where people are really struggling with this one. So here we are in Blitz Stars, and I've stuck the Object 140, the T62A, and the WZ121 all next to each other. Because to be perfectly honest with you, they're all pretty much the same tank. Now you can see straight off the bat that the DPM of the object and the T62A are exactly the same. The 121 does struggle with DPM, but we'll get to that. Penetration, however, you can see the T62A is slightly better. And I'll be honest with you, the Object 140 generally does struggle with its penetration, especially with newer players, because newer players are finding it difficult to get to those hot spots on the tanks that they're facing to get that penetration shot. Alpha damage, it's exactly the same as the T62A, not as good as the WZ121. The WZ121 does have some stonking alpha damage at 420. Rate of fire, though, of the 121 is pretty low. You can see here, the Object 140, T62A, exactly the same. Reload time on the two tanks, exactly the same. Caliber, exactly the same. Shell velocity, exactly the same. Now, when you move over to the 121, you can see that the rate of fire, the reload time, and the shell velocity are all lower, but it does have a bigger caliber gun. Rolling down, you can then start to see some differences creeping in. The aim time at the Object 140 is longer than the T-62A. This is why the T-62A is an easier tank to play than the Object 140. The dispersion is a lot better on the T-62A. Remember, the dispersion is you've got the reticle, and it's how far the, the shell travels within that reticle. You can see there the dispersion on the 140 is 0 0.317. That is quite a lot for a medium tank. Whereas on the T-62A, it's 0 0.272. That is pretty stonking. That's why the T-62A is so accurate. Move rotation in turret, you can see that the Object 140 is slightly better, and it's certainly better than that of the WZ-121. This is where the Object 140, however, starts to struggle in a newer player's hands. That gun depression, it's only 6 degrees, whereas the T-62A is 7 degrees. Now, 7 degrees and 6 degrees are much in it, it's 1 degree, but it makes a difference, and it makes a huge difference. Speed-wise, well, the 140 is a lot quicker. Five kilometers quicker. Again, it doesn't sound a lot, but five kilometers when you're trying to get out of trouble is pretty significant. Engine power is the same as the T62A. Power to weight ratio, slightly better than the T62A. Now you would think that would make its terrain resistance slightly better, but actually it doesn't, it makes it worse, oddly enough. Only slightly, but it's ever so slightly, and that, that, it does make a difference in the grander scheme of things. 
the same as the effective um, horsepower that also makes a problem i mean when you've got when you're putting the weight down horsepower to tonnage the t62a whilst the power to weight ratio of the 140 is better the effective hp the way it is brought down is is not as good unfortunately the horsepower to the tonnage is not as good you see there the no mod traverse better on the t62a camo profile is actually better on the object 140 in fact it's, it's significantly better 29 still 22 moving whereas the t62a is 27 and 20 respectively even after it shoots the camo profile is better credit coefficient see wow well, the t62a beats both in enrichment boost and standalone that of the object 140 view range exactly the same hit points the object 140 has less hit points it's only 50 but it does make a difference that's the thing weight well the object 140 is slightly lighter but you know when you go back to the train resistance etc etc and the way it moves that weight around and distributes it makes it a lot harder to play armor wise well the turret this is where it gets a little bit strange we'll have a look at armor profile in a minute but you can see there that the turret armor is actually slightly better than that of the t62a especially on the sides on the front it's the same on the sides it's 187 that's pretty stonking and at the back it's 65. the t62a does have better frontal hull armor only six points but it's enough whereas the object 140 has better side and rear again not massive amount i mean it's two on the sides and significantly more on the rear almost 10 but it does make a huge difference to be honest with you now we start looking at the win rates now i just want to tell you something about the win rates here you can see that only 3202 players play the object 140 compared to 6620 and I know for a fact that some of the better players in the game would prefer the Object 140 over the T62A for numerous reasons. So you can see that the Object 140 is outpacing the T62A in everything except players. And that makes you scratch your head. Hang on a moment. The T62A on paper is a better tank, or so it would seem. So why is it that in all the stats, it is slightly worse than that of the Object 140. Well, it's the way it's played, <clears throat> and it's by the players who play it. And this is why Wargaming are tinkering with it in Update 9.10. Because, as I said, every player seems to go to the T62A route in that tech tree. As you can see there, I mean, there are, you know, 50% more players are playing it than that of the object 140 yet you can also see that the object 140 is a better tank so wargaming are going to try and bring in because a lot of new players think well what's the point the 140 and the t62a they're exactly the same the t62a is better i know it's better because all the youtubers say it's better and uh, it's got a better gun it's more accurate etc etc it's got better armor so why would i go for the object 140 so that's why they're bringing in this these changes to make the object 140 different to that of the T62A. They're not going to change its parameters too much. It's going to be more of a light medium rather than a, a full-on medium, which is what it is at the moment. And it's going to have a bit of better speed and it, it, it's, it's going to have better view range and stuff like that. Now, a lot of the top players have sort of they've scratched their heads at this. It's causing them slight, you know, slight concerns because they don't see that the Object 140 needs these changes. Whereas Wargaming is saying, well, actually it does because everybody's playing the T62A and nobody's grinding to the Object 140, which is a crying shame because you can see right there that it's a much better tank. So let's jump in to the Armour Inspector and let's see the differences. First, we're going to look at the Object 140. Here is the Object 140 in all its glory facing off against an E50M another medium this time german and you can see straight away it's got a very low profile and when i show you the t62a you will see that the object 140 is a lot squishier uh, more squat than that of the t62a first and foremost you can see straight off the bat that the lower hall is well wide open anybody can pen it and you can also see that 
there are bits and bobs on the turret. Now, good players generally move the turret around a lot. They don't keep it still. And therefore, it's very difficult to get anything on that. Okay, you also get players moving it like this. They wiggle it and jiggle it. And that makes it very difficult to hit those spots on the turret. It is actually not a bad tank when you go haul down. It looks like the turret is wide open, but you know, to be honest with you, you will get those bounces. The problem this tank suffers from is this. I mean, it is just, I mean, it's, it's, it's very thin, and therefore, if you stick that out in the open too much, then everybody's gonna pen you, simple as. So the question is, is it a side scraper? Well, it can, funnily enough, add a push, but again, the front plates are very open, and now you're opening the turret as well. But as I said, nine times out of 10 player, you know, the players who are good don't, don't keep it in a side scraping position. They wiggle it and jiggle it quite a lot to make that profile really, really trolly. You will get bounces on this thing, not going to lie. But let's have a quick look at the T62A, and this will start to show you why some players are more comfortable in the T62A than that of the Object 140. So here we go with the T62A. Again, it's facing off against an E50M. So I haven't changed the tanks, and it's all standard ammunition. And you can see straight away that the turret, firstly, stands taller. It's a much taller turret. It's not as squat as the Object 140, but you can also see it's a lot thicker. Um, despite the fact that the Object 140 is very low, I mean, this thing, you don't need to wiggle the turret that much. In fact, if you do, you can see that the side cheeks there of the gun mantlet then come into play. So a lot of people find this tank a lot easier because of that turret profile. The armor at the front is still pretty bad, um, and you're still going to be able to pen it, but it's a much easier tank to get into that haul down position because it's just got that one degree extra. And when you stick that one degree extra in, that upper turret, that upper glacius plate suddenly becomes a lot harder to, to pen. And it also come, becomes a lot harder to hit these. There are some penetrating parts, but they're so tiny. You know, you need to be a one hell of a shot to do that. And that's the thing. I mean, they are, it's more luck than judgment. And you'll genuinely find that some of the better players will be using HE on those parts. That's why this tank, generally speaking, is a lot easier to get on with than that of the Object 140. I mean, let's just flick back to the Object 140. I mean, this is it in its all down position, as you can see. Now let's just flick back to the 140, which has one degree less, and let's see how that profile stands up when you go fully haul down. Here we are back with the Object 140, and as you can see, fully haul down, it is not the same profile as that of the T62A. You're only getting six degrees of gun depression, and the cupolas are now wide open, unlike that, that what we saw with the T62A. We've also got the tops of the mantle cheeks. They are also wide open. Admittedly, the glacius plate upper is pretty, pretty solid, but people are struggling in this tank, thinking that it's gonna be as solid as the T62A. Now, here's the thing. It is pretty solid. I mean, as I said, you, you know, most good players will be wiggling and jiggling all this to make sure that those shots don't aren't as easy as you think. Um, and that's what generally players do. But the idea beyond the object win 40 is, and I keep saying this, you have to look at the tank's strengths and weaknesses at the same time. And the strength of this one over the T62A is it's got speed. Speed makes a big difference. So you've got to be mindful of that. So here we are back in the garage looking at the Object 140. Now, what is the loadout? Well, this is my loadout. I'm not saying you have to use this loadout. This is just the loadout I use. So let's have a look at the equipment first. Now, because it does struggle with its penetration, I always play the Object 140 with calibrated shells. Why? Because I just want that extra penetration. Now look, it's got pretty good DPM already. If I load a gun rammer, the DPM goes up, and it goes up quite a lot to 249, so it's 3,546. But it's got pretty good DPM as it is, so I don't really need a gun rammer. I would prefer the calibrated shells with this one. Moving across, do I have improved modules? No, because I don't see the need for it. I actually go for the defense system. That's, that gives me minus 10% chance of getting engine damage, Eight minus eight percent chance of crew injury and seven percent minus seven percent chance of an ammo rack. 
But I would rather have the defense system rather than the improved modules. It's got, at the moment, I've got it with the additional view range, bringing me up to almost 300 meters. That may change, but there's no point me running a camo net on a medium tank. I mean, what is the point, you know? It's, it's gonna give me an additional 10 while stationary, five on moving and two on firing. The camo profile of this thing already is pretty good. So I don't need a camo net. Why would I do that when I can have better view range? And the view range will go up in 9.1, so you're gonna have even better view range, which is good in a tank like this. I then use the enhanced gun laying device. Why? Because it doesn't have good aim time when you compare it to the T62A. So enhanced gun laying device just brings that aiming time down ever so slightly, allowing you to get on that target a bit quicker. Now, I could put a supercharger in, but what's the point? Um, you know, I mean, the, the velocity of the rounds are good enough as it is. You don't need a supercharger. I use the enhanced laying device. I then move on to the improved assembly. That gives me an extra 111 hit points. Don't forget, this thing has 50 less hit points than a T62A. So that additional 111 hit points actually brings me up to just below 2,000, which I don't think is a bad thing. I mean, that's, it, it's, it's half a shot. I mean, I could go for the enhanced armor, plus four to hull and turret. The turret is, is pretty okay. I don't really need it on the hull, not really, because the hull is pretty open as it is. So I'd rather have the additional hit points. I then go for the engine accelerator, why? Because it's already got a great turn of speed. I mean, I could I could put in the improved control, which gives me a whole turn rate, which is better. But why would I need that when I can go for the engine accelerator? I can get power, better power to weight ratio, better whole turn rate, and better engine power. That allows me to be slightly more mobile. Simple as that. Moving down, I use a vertical stabilizer. It again helps reduce that aim time and gives me 15% more accuracy. What is the point of me having a refined gun? There is no point. Okay, it reduces the dispersion and it brings it down to 0 0.289. But I'm a medium. I should be firing on the move a lot, etc., etc. I don't really need the refined gun. The dispersion I find on the tank, whilst being large, is pretty good. Now, I generally only use a refined gun when it comes to TDs because I should be firing from distance, not up close and personal. I then stick in a toolbox and I then stick in high-end consumables. Pretty much my loadout. Moving to the ammunition, well, I generally take 30 standard AP rounds, 15 heat, and I have five HE because, you know, I'm gonna fire more standard ammunition than I am anything else. And I just need that heat rounds in there when I come up against things like E100s, etc., etc. when I need to penetrate those cheeks. Moving to provisions, I use extra combat rations. Why? Because my view range goes up, my DPM goes up, my reload time goes up, my aiming time goes up. Everything gets better. My dispersion gets better, my turret turn gets better, my all turn and my terrain crossing all get better. I then use protective kit because I want protection because this thing is pretty, pretty, pretty open. So it gives me all that. And then I use the improved fuel because I want that additional speed, the better power to weight ratio, that better engine power to get me across the terrain. So those are my three provisions. Moving to consumables, well, I have the engine power boost because sometimes I need to get out of trouble really quickly. I then have the multi-purpose restoration pack because I need to get my crew repaired, etc., etc. And I also have adrenaline because I need that additional boost to the loading capability when I'm in times of trouble. It's as simple as that. So what I'm going to then do... Oh, and by the way, stick your camo on, guys. Um, I mean, I'm using legendary camo here, but look, if I put the camo on, I get 3% additional to consumer. Now, a lot of people don't understand the values of camos, okay? Now, the thing about camo is this. I, I roll out in the top tiers and I see a lot of players with bare naked tanks because they don't understand, as they've grinded their way up through the tiers, the need for camouflage. 
okay and they just think it's an unnecessary expense or whatever it's not an unnecessary expense no one's telling you you've got to load your legendary camos and spend four thousand gold there are plenty of camos in there that are firstly i mean you can you can use them for credits just your standard ones that also gives you three percent okay now don't think it just makes your tank look pretty it does make your tank look pretty i'm not gonna lie but that additional three percent to your camo profile is massive you may not think it is you may think it's just a waste of 115,000 credits believe me it's not you need that additional three percent so all of you out there who you know don't see the value in camos just think it's a waste of time or a waste of money or a waste of resources believe me stick a camo on your tank you will be much better off you are going to increase your chances of not getting spotted and that is a big big deal especially in the upper tiers so do yourselves a favor and stick some camo on but all that's very nice and good what's the tank actually like to play in a game well here we are on faust and what we're going to do i'm tuned up with doc b2 from the clan Vale, my clan and we're going to go up to the top left hand corner and the idea that I've got in mind, I've looked at their lineup and I think that there's going to be something coming this way. I want to hold a line. Now the thing about the Object 140 is it is a great tank to hold a position, especially if you are in a good position. Okay, you will get those troll bounces on its turret. Unlike this poor Object 140 who shows his bottom plate and loses half his hit points in next to no time. The gun on the Object 140, whilst not as accurate as the one as the T62A, is still pretty cool. And as you can see, that struggles with the Kranwagen because it struggles with that penetration, even with the calibrated shells. But we don't have any such problems with the standard B. So what I'm going to do, I just want to hold this line, and this is what you need to sort of consider doing in tanks like the Object 140. Now I see a lot of newer players get frustrated and they want to roll around the battlefield and run around like crazy and they get themselves into trouble if you're in a good position okay then nine times out of ten the enemy are going to push onto you and the enemy are going to make a mistake and you can see here I've got a standard b and e 150 b all pushing because they are desperate to get those shots in and get those kills and it's going ahead in tears for them standard b is gone the e 100 is now going to push me this is why i load the heat put one into him i'm going to roll back i'm going to wiggle it and jiggle it around a little bit the hull and he um, there we go we get the bounce 640 i mean that was a good roll and now he is gone and i switched to ap there because i can really penetrate the drive socket and the bottom plate of the e100 so we're doing okay here 2.3k damage we bounced 640 we've taken two kills the amx 50 is going to go down i can contemplated loading he but i've been having troubles with he really now i'm going to load it take him out he is gone just the clown wagon left my tune mate should finish him off there you go bob's your uncle fan is your aunt we leave on pretty decent hit points i'm not setting the world on fire here you know i'm doing relatively decent damage 2.8k we killed three damage four block 640 get a nice second class and i'm happy with that game i held a line i held the position i let the enemy come to me we lost a bit of credits because i fired some heat into the uh, into the e50 and into the e100 and also into the kranwagen but you can see what the object 140 is actually capable of doing it's capable of holding quite a dominant position and it, it you know the, the the dpm's good the reload's good and it will penetrate even though it doesn't look like it will we then roll out on castilla it's a map i actually do like now a lot of people don't like this map they're saying that it's a bit dull and drab and dreary the colors need to be a bit brighter but i do still think it looks like somewhere in southern italy i admit i don't like the fact that it's been flattened not overly keen on that but as a map I, I, I'm, I'm thinking it's pretty cool now a couple of things about tanks and the roles that they play in the game 
There are four classes of tanks, light tanks, medium tanks, heavy tanks, and TDs. Now, each tank has a role to play. Okay, within those, within those tiers of the tanks, there are sort of nuances, but the generic roles are as follows. Light tanks have got basically not much armor. Let's forget the T100 LT. They don't have much armor. They've got really great mobility. Um, they've got good DPM, generally speaking, and you know they're likely, you know, you know they're, they're very lightly armored. That's the thing. And what they're meant to be doing is spotting the enemy. They get out there straight away, spot the enemy up, turn around, and run away. And that's what they're meant to do. They're then meant to harry, harass, and be a complete nuisance to the enemy. And when the time is right use their mobility to get in and roll around the enemy and sort of circle them to death and things like that. That is what a light tank is meant to do. Your medium tank, of which the Object 140 is, is not a frontliner. It's not a light tank either. It is a second line support tank. And what medium tanks are meant to do, they are meant to farm damage. That is their role on the battlefield. So for a large proportion of the battle, your medium tanks should be sat in a position of relative safety, albeit a dominant position, able to train their guns onto the enemy and farm their damage. Most medium tanks do not have massive eye and alpha. Now, when the time is right, they're then meant to use their mobility and their high DPM to get in there and finish off the enemy, pretty much like a light tank. Heavy tanks, They've got a lot of hit points, and they've got a lot of armor. They are your bullies. They are your front line tanks, okay? They're the ones who are meant to be brawling a little bit on the front line, and they're, therefore your medium should be farming behind the evis. And finally, you're gonna have your TDs. They should be sat at the back. Now, when the time is right, you do things like this. You've saved your hit points, your hit points are a resource, you move in, and then you use your high DPM, to track out the TDs and things like that, which is exactly what we did on the SU-122 there. Now going back, your TDs are meant to be at the back mainly, and you're meant to be suckering in your enemy onto those big guns. Um, this is where new players generally struggle. They use the tanks in the wrong roles. Now what you've seen me do here, along with my tune mate, is take a dominant position and just farm away until my heart is content. And then when the time is right, we then move in, we then push, and we then finish off the enemy. We don't set the world on fire, we're doing 3.7k, we take two kills, and we finish the game on more than half our hit points. That is how mediums, really, their role should be. You are farming damage, that is your role. We get a second class we get a load of, uh, we get crucial contribution or probably the art, we get a crucial contribution, and we get a decent amount of credits and XP. And this is the thing, guys. Play the role the tank is designed for. Between me and my toon mate there, look, we've done almost 9,000 damage just by farming, sitting on that castle area on Castilla and just farming damage until our hearts are content and then pushing in and taking five kills when we needed to. Remember that there are roles that the tanks need to play. Understand the role your tank should be playing. As I said, there are nuances to that, you know, because we even within the tiers, you know, an E100 in a mouse has got a different role to a 215B in a 113, but they're still heavy tanks. So just take your time to sort of understand what role you're meant to play. This is the last game, and I'll, I'll be fair enough, I got very lucky in this game, to be honest with you. But I want to go back and recap what I was talking about over the last two games. Now look, I'm a medium. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all I know about playing mediums into this game. Okay, and I do get lucky, I have to admit. But I'm going to hold a line, hold a position, and farm. And that is exactly what I do in this game. And you will then start to see the benefits of tanks like the Object 140. Now, the, the, the Type 71 there says stupid med. He's going he's gonna to regret saying that, to be honest with you. I, I know the player. He's a good player. He's like 60% plus win rate um, with a lot of thousands and thousands of battles. Uh, but he's going to regret that. This is a brilliant shot. Look at that. Shoot the ground. 
beautiful. Now the bat chat here, tier 10 bat chat, makes a huge mistake. Firstly, he's coming at me backwards. He's reversing into me, so his, his armor profile is very forward. And, you know, he's, he's just going to be in a world of pain. He's fired his, his clip already. He's going to get one into me, but, you know, he's doomed and gloomed and he's out of the way. Now... I can see that they've got three TDs, and all three TDs are, are over in that corner. Put one into the T62A, and finished off by the Leo. The TDs are in the corner. This is a farm fest, and this is what I'm trying to explain about the roles that tanks have on the battlefield. I am not going to push down onto them. I want them to push onto me. I want them to make the mistake, and I want to punish them. And that's exactly what happens, okay? So the, the, the 183 here, he's, he's pushed out. He hasn't got the most accurate of guns. I'm going to try and track him. Uh, the, the Leo tracks him, but I perma-track him. So he's now, he really is in a world of pain. I've got the object. I've got Tatidi's just trying to smack me. I'm in a pretty decent position here. I've got better DPM. I've dropped the adrenaline. Down he goes. We're already at 2.8k. We've bounced 310 and we've taken a kill. I think the grill's there. I miss him, but he smacks me. It was really annoying. But this is the dispersion. You know, remember the dispersion? Look at that. We get a nice roll into his upper plate. I over push here. He manages to get a good roll into me, but leaves me on four hit points. That is where I got lucky. Now, once bitten twice shy is like what I'd say. Now, I'm going to take out this AMX now who's uh, toying with the Type 71, who shouted at us all earlier, now he's got an AFK. Um, we finish him off. 3.8k, still going to stay in this corner, still holding this line, and I'm just going to farm away as much as possible, get as much damage out of these guys as I can. There we go, put another one into the grill. Now we're at 4.1k, plenty of tanks on my team. I'm telling them to attack, might as well push. I'm not going to push, I've got 4 HP. I don't know why the Leo is saying, why did we why, why did we yellow? We didn't. I didn't, anyway. Um, and I'm just going to sit here and, you know, content myself with getting a high damage. And this is why you should be looking to do in tanks like the Object 140. In fact, most medium tanks, but especially tanks like the 140. Find a good position. Now, you need to know your maps, guys. And you need to know what your tanks can and cannot do. We end up the game with 4.6k, 3 kills, bounce 310. We got a little bit lucky with that 4 HP, not going to lie. But he did high roll. You know, it wasn't like he low rolled. He didn't. We got a nice first class. I'm very happy with that. And that just goes to show the role tanks like this are meant to play and what you can actually do in an Object 140. It's not as shabby as people think. It's certainly not as difficult as people think. But you've got to remember, don't go rushing in. You rush in, you're going to die. It's as simple as that. You're going to be back in the garage, scratching your head, saying, why on earth did I get the Object 140? It's a rubbish tank. When really, it just isn't. Anyway, I've been Fuji, and that has been my take on the Object 140. A tank I really like. In fact, I spammed it most... Or in fact, all day yesterday. It's the only tank I played. There's only like 30-odd battles in it, or whatever it was. Came away with a 75 to 80% win rate. And they weren't all in a tune with Doc B2. A lot of them were solo battles like this one here. The thing about the Object 140, a friend of mine, you should all know him, Rolling Swarm, loves this tank. He absolutely adores this tank. And when players of that caliber like this tank, you have to ask yourself the question, why is that? Because it's a great tank. Look, it's not the easiest tank to play. I'm not going to kid you. The T62A is far easier. It's more noob friendly. This one does take knowledge, experience, and skill. Now, that's not to say I've got the skill. It takes all of my experience and knowledge to play this tank effectively, not going to lie. I mean, don't forget, I'm a 50-year-old guy. I haven't got the reflexes of a 17-year-old. So it takes a lot of effort for me to play tanks like this particularly well. You know, not because I've got amazing skills, but because I've got knowledge and experience of the game and playing it for eight years. And I'm always eager to learn. And I'm eager to know what the role should be, what the maps are, blah, blah, blah. And that's the thing, and I'm big thankful here for mid for Serenity to come in to save my sorry ass because it was looking a bit dubious, to be fair. Thing is, as I say, if you can play tanks like the Object 140 particularly well, then you can play almost any medium in the game effectively, to be fair. It takes a lot of getting used to, 
and it's not a T62A. It's a harder tank to play. But as I kept saying, the rewards are really satisfying. I mean, I, 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 I come away more satisfied if I play the Object 140 particularly well than I do the T62A. Anyway, I want to hear what your thoughts are on this tank and how you play it and what you think. I want to know. That's what the comments section of these videos is all about. It's for you to tell me. So simple as that, guys. Let me know what you think of the Object 140. Let me know what you think about the gameplay. By all means, let me know what you think about this video. And until the next time, remember this. It's just a game. So stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.